Hi everybody, Pastor Cliff here with the Goodness Gracious Podcast broadcast coming to you from Grace Community Church in Surprise, Arizona. We are here with a man that I have known for about probably 13, 14 years, uh, at least by phone, yep. and I'm really yep. excited to have him here with us today because if you don't know who Ed McCallum is, you're missing out. <laughs> in fact, in a few minutes, you're going to get to meet the power behind Ed McCallum, mm -hmm. his lovely wife, Nan, mm -hmm. and it's uh, great to have both of them here with us. But uh, Ed, um, you, are, uh, you are one of our missionaries. That's uh, true. And, uh, true. And, and you've, been, you, you've been serving in Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. but this is kind of a new endeavor. Um, and we're going to talk about okay. that in just a, a minute. It's so important that we know who our missionaries are mm -hmm. so we can be praying for them. But we also want to kind of get to know mm, a little bit more of the, you know, where are you from and mm -hmm. how did you get here and what are some of the challenges. So, Ed, tell us well, where you grew up. Well, first of all, I'm surprised you even invited me here. I think the uh, well, first time I met you in person, it was after a, you know, the huge tornado in Joplin. Oh, and then the uh, next time I met you, I think you're on a walker here in Grace. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, now we you know in the midst of a pandemic, I'm, I'm not sure if it's good for us to get I, together. It's but, dangerous. You know, it's I dangerous. I, I think Nan was giving me the eye a little earlier, like, oh, I'm not sure about this. You know, but it it is it is great to have you so. here. And you have been such a wonderful friend and support, even though I've probably given you more of a hard time <laughs> over the years than... Than most people. Oh, Cliff Mansley calling? Yeah, mm -hmm. boy, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm, I yeah. think I'm out. <laughs> but no. uh, yeah, in fact, if you didn't know this, Ed McCallum, prior, prior to coming, to, prior to going into the mission field, you were, we'll, we'll work our way backwards here. So, oh, okay. um, so prior to being in the mission field, you were the number two guy in the whole denomination, the whole Evangelical Presbyterian Church. The mm -hmm. assistant stated clerk of the General Assembly. Mm -hmm. That's a mouthful. Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, did, it is. Did you have to say that on a regular basis? Uh, it's what I always wanted to be when I grew up. <laughs> the assistant stated clerk of the, in the office of the General Assembly of the Evangelical Presbyterian Church. <laughs> Man, you, know, had, <laughs> you worked on that. No, it was, uh, yeah, it was a uh, situation of being, you know, the right right person, right time uh, at the where. Uh, at, at, the, the time in the denomination when it was needed. Uh, first stated clerk was uh, ending his term and they wanted someone to come in to uh, help with transitional issues, uh, not to become the stated clerk, uh, which would have been a disaster for me and a disaster for the denomination, but uh, to be there through the transition and to help uh, the new person. So you were there when Jeff Jeremiah came on board? In fact, even and, before that, even when and, uh, Mike Lodo uh, followed Ed Davis, so I was there for uh, Mike's transition and then also for Jeff Jeremiah's transition wow. following, following Mike. So I was there just, just shy of 20 years. So, uh, you know, it, it may not be the most glorious thing, but a guy like Ed is a whole lot of stability for someone who is the stated <laughs> clerk. Because a guy like Ed isn't the one they're going to shoot at when there's trouble. They're, sure. they're going to shoot at <laughs> Jeff Jeremiah or someone like that who's now on his way out. But, yeah. um, um, you know, it, 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 but Ed's the kind of guy who gets to say, well, you know, this is what I see. This is, you know, I'm watching your flank and, you know, we've got to. So I, I've always appreciated that. I knew that when I might not be able to get in touch with Jeff, I could certainly have a listening ear with you, and so thank you for, for that work. What were, what were some of the, give us a, a one or two items that were really interesting to your work at the General Assembly. We There was a time, uh, right, uh, it would have been 2004 or five, right around that period of time, uh, we were, there was a group of the leaders of the denomination were gathered, and we had come to the conclusion that we had perfectly structured ourselves to be a small, plateaued, reformed denomination. You know, we were about 185 churches, had been that for years. And we also then realized that uh, we didn't think that that's, that was God's purpose, mm -hmm. that uh, we needed to make some changes. And uh, one of the Changes. Uh, sorry, the uh, uh, moderator. Now he's uh, with with the Lord, uh, Paul Heidebrecht. Uh, I remember uh, Paul. 
He led the um, General Assembly at one of their communion services in, in June in a time of repentance, just in getting on our knees before the Lord for not following through on the mission that God had given us. Uh, so fascinating to see what happened. It, what God did after that uh, was not, we could, there was no way that we could have planned uh, what happened. In fact, it, it, you know, if we had longer time, we'd tell you, but uh, this seems to be the history of the EPC, kind of responding to what God is doing. Uh, we, we're, our strategic plans sometimes don't work out so well. <laughs> but uh, yeah. when we respond to what God's doing, it seems to happen. After, shortly after that, we started reading material about the missional church, and it was uh, like a fresh breeze that, uh, that blew. Uh, One of the big goals it was the 2020 uh, vision to reach a lot of people who were in the Islamic world with the right. gospel. Yep, yeah, yeah. engage 2025, which is... Uh, oh, 2025. Yeah, that's right, yeah. which is uh, what, uh, one of the big uh, pieces of uh, EPC's world outreach. Uh, that's uh, the mission, mission agency that uh, Nan and I are in, involved in. Uh, and engage 2025 is about sending people like, like you and me, uh, others, to... Uh, to follow God into places where the church is not. Uh, there are uh, thousands of groups of people that have uh, no opportunity to hear the gospel, many of them in the Muslim world. And that's where we put our, our focus, our emphasis. Not an exclusive thing, but that's where a lot of our resources are devoted, to getting people uh, into, into the Muslim world. You know, one of the other things that you and, and Jeff and the, the EPC has been so helpful with is you rescued people like myself from, <laughs> from my former denomination, which had really kind of gone far to the left yeah. of the gospel. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I want to thank you for that. That was an incredibly gracious thing to mm -hmm. open the doors to a bunch of suspect people <laughs> And uh, and I I hope that the it, there's real excitement as a oh, yeah. result of that. But yeah, it's a fascinating time. Uh, never would I have imagined that we would have gone from 185 churches to over 600 in just uh, in just a relatively few years. And it's uh, it's it's changed things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think for the better. I think, but we're you know we're not uh, we're not we didn't do that just to shuffle the chairs in the you know in the denominational world, but to I think God brought us together. Uh, to, to be on mission together. Mm -hmm. And now there's a, a much, much better critical mass of people to be able to do that with. Now, Ed, I'm just curious. Uh, Good. When you were a child dreaming of becoming the assistant stated clerk in the General Assembly of oh, the yes. Evangelical Presbyterian mean, Church. When I was having nightmares? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, where, where were you born? I was born in Highland Park, Michigan. Which oh, is wow. a city, small city that's surrounded by the city of Detroit. It's a city within a city. Oh yeah. Park, but we brought up on the northwest side of Detroit. And what did your folks do for a living? My father was a cost estimator for a uh, small uh, family-run uh, manufacturing company, meaning you know he would uh, he would have to be that middleman between uh, the, the, the salesmen and the people who um, were buying the products. So and what kind of things did they manufacture? They manufactured tubular parts for uh, the automotive industry. Perfect. So if you put gas into your uh, into your car, it probably might have run through a tube that uh, was made by the company. Well, that's pretty cool. So your dad did that. Do you have a stay-at-home mom? Yes. Yep. And, and that worked out pretty well for you? It did. Can you tell us about a time you got into a lot of trouble with your folks? I mean, just when you were really yes. naughty or something? Yes. We want to know about these things. I, I was raised in a Jewish neighborhood in Detroit. <laughs> and uh, my, uh, my best friend across the street, Howie Levy, there's a good Jewish name for you. Uh, <laughs> I went across the street uh, and without permission to his house, and I was found out and Got back and it was uh, the most terrible punishment uh, imaginable was meted out on me. I had to go for a week without watching the Mickey Mouse Club. That's tough. It, it was. Your parents it was, it was were bad, pretty it abusive. Was bad news. Hard, hard kind of a context. Yeah, yeah. So you grew up in Highland Highland Park. Well, I was born there. That's where the hospital was. I was, born, it was our house was in uh, Detroit, northwest side. Northwest side of Detroit. Yeah. Okay, and and you were there in the heyday of the, of the Motor City. Oh yeah. And um, 
Uh, are you a Motown hits kind of guy? Do you like that well, kind of music, or is kind of listen back to yeah, that that's that was fun music. Yeah, it yeah. really was. Yeah. So, Indeed. so um, you grew up there. You went to high school there, I assume. We uh, in junior high, we moved out to the suburbs. Uh, that okay. is a lakes region around the northwest of Detroit, and then. So I went to uh, Clifford Smart Junior High. It's a good name. That isn't a good name. It's a good then, name. Uh, then Walled Lake Central High School. Go oh. Vikings. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So um, when and where did, I mean, were you, did, were you raised in the church? Did you, I mean, yes. meaning that you went to church? We were raised, did you we were raised in a Christian home. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, so I really never, never recall a time when I didn't believe in God. Uh, but long years of just feeling there's got to be more. Mm -hmm. this, you know, uh, mm -hmm. Christianity was seemed like um, uh, like eating you know, dry shredded wheat, you know, no <laughs> milk, and, uh, no sugar, nothing. Just... This is before the EPC came along. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah I was brought up in the uh, well. It was at the time the United Presbyterian Church. Yeah, take which, note, United Pres. Oh, never mind. Which uh, it's gone now. It's gone. Yeah, it was, it was absorbed in the uh, EPC. Yeah, yeah. I USA. used to be a United Presbyterian myself, right. so it was a little like. Uh, yeah, eating gypsum dust or something like that. But, yeah. No, that's that was my problem. It wasn't uh, as I think back on the pastor because I, I heard good good stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, our uh, uh, pastor during my high school years really was uh, involved in the Presbyterian Charismatic Renewal. Wow, uh, and that's a big but, deal. Uh, I just uh, it, I knew a lot of stuff, but it hadn't hadn't really grabbed my heart. So that, that didn't happen until college. Uh, okay. Central Michigan University in Mount Pleasant, Michigan, about right in the center of the of the state. Sure. And um, God surrounded me with a with a group of Christian people, uh, and they I realized they had what I was missing in in the Christian faith. Uh, they had a vital relationship with the Lord. They loved me when I was having a hard time loving myself, and that brought you know, a community when I was feeling very lonely. Um, and uh, it just through a whole series of events in my freshman year, mm -hmm. uh, which really it culminated. Um, uh, well, I was I was in a choir. Uh, uh, it was a touring choir sponsored by the Presbyterian United Presbyterian Church in uh, Mount Pleasant, Michigan, and they we were in the sanctuary singing the, the song Pass It On. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't, a lot of people think oh, that's kind of a sappy campfire <laughs> song, but it was, uh, God just uh, revealed himself. Isn't it interesting just, how uh, God will wow. use some of these uh, just mm -hmm. songs that you, you wouldn't, and all of a sudden, there it yeah. is. And then, yeah. then later on, I was in my room alone, just realizing, um, you know, Lord, I kind of came to that point and say, Lord, I don't know if you're in my life now or not. I mean, I've always known about you, but I, Lord, I want to make sure, and I just want to give myself to you. Lord, uh, you will do a much better job with my life than I'm doing right now. So, Lord, I just, I give myself to you. And, and I was just, I was just alone in my, in my room, and then kind of confirmed that not too many weeks, weeks later, when I heard a sermon at my home church by this Presbyterian charismatic uh, pastor uh, who wow. talked about uh, the gift that we give God at Christmas mm -hmm. time. It was Christmas. You know, Mary mm -hmm. said said to the Lord, uh, you know, said to the angel, you know, Lord, you know, let, may it be to me according to your will. Mm -hmm. You know, let's mm -hmm. give God the gift of our lives. And yeah. I went forward during their call to discipleship that they kind of confirmed publicly what had been a long process of the Lord in taking me through. So. Well, now, now the big question, uh, along with that, I mean, obviously that is the biggest question, but the, the big question is, when did you have a close encounter, or at least any kind of an encounter, with the lovely Miss Nan? Uh, well, it was in that same singing group that I mentioned, to uh -huh. It was a little bit later. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm her senior. She tries to respect her elders uh, most, ah. most, of the, most of the time. But uh, uh, the, um, oh, I met her, uh, she was in the same singing group. I, she doesn't remember this, but I, I remember going up to her and saying, uh, Hello, Marilyn. Her name is Nan. Uh, and I thought she was a person I had met at a, at a gathering the previous night. Uh, oh. So that's how we first, how we first met. But um, it was, It's a good thing that she's blank, uh, blocked that out of her memory. We were part of a, part of a Bible study group uh, together because everyone in the singing group had to be part of a Bible study. And... Actually, she was kind of part of this group because she kind of liked the Bible study leader who was my roommate. Uh, but anyway, 
thing, things progressed and we uh, fell in love and uh, we were married uh, when we were uh, young and foolish. I was a very, I was an exceptionally mature 21 year old when we were married and she was even more mature, 19 year old. When we were married, so. And it's we been had, all, the odds. all mist and bliss since then? Oh, absolutely. Time. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so now well, we've made it. Yeah. Ed, in, before you became the assistant state clerk of the General Assembly of the <laughs> Evangelical <laughs> Presbyterian Church, uh, did, were you a pastor or yeah. were you in the... On my way there, I was a music teacher in the public schools uh, and then in Michigan. And then really? worked, worked uh, full-time for um, a, a church as their campus and Christian education director. And then went to seminary. And so we were we had two kids when we were in, in seminary. At, Which uh, seminary? At Trinity Evangelical oh, Divinity great School. school. Uh, was D.A. Carson there at the time? He was. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Still there, I think. Yeah, I think he's an emeritus professor yeah. now, yeah. but uh, wow. doing a lot of speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, then from there, uh, pastored a church in Tucson for uh, Grew to Love, Arizona. Mm -hmm. We were there in Tucson. How our, about that? Our kids kind of uh, feel like they kind of grew up in Arizona. Uh, and uh, then we then from there just uh, took the call back to Michigan. How, how many kids do you have? Two. Two, two yeah. kids. Mm -hmm. Two boys. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so you took another call back in Michigan, mm -hmm. or was that was that with the General Assembly yes. when they were still okay up in right. Livonia, right. and uh, right. and now you're missing out because they're down in Orlando. Right. So so much for Mickey. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but now after you've had this wonderful career you are you, I mean really you worked hard I know you I know yeah. just from the nature of your title that I know from what you mm -hmm. do I know that it was a lot of work mm -hmm. after that I would almost envision you collapsing and saying okay I'm going to Tahiti uh, to yeah. hang out on Fiji. the beaches Fiji Fiji yeah. Fiji sure Fiji for, for, for like ever <laughs> But in, instead, you were listening, and God called you to something new and yeah. something exciting. It was, it was clear that uh, the season of ministry at the General Assembly office was coming to an end. You know, I, uh, a different set of gifts and anyway, things had changed. Anyway, it was, it was season that was closed, uh, but, and that's fine. That's good. Uh, and for a couple of weeks, the idea of Fiji or Tahiti or, or, the, or the golf courses in Arizona, because yeah. uh, the kids were here, and oh, yeah. uh, well, you know, that sounds pretty good. That, but that, uh, the Lord wouldn't let us sit with that for very long. We realized there was, there was something else. We weren't sure exactly what, explored a number of things. Um, you know, interim ministries was a possibility. Church revitalization work was a possibility. But uh, what really stuck was um, to be somehow to be involved in, uh, in missions mm -hmm. uh, in the global work of the church. Mm -hmm. I mean, the door that got opened for us was this, uh, the, uh, this group called the International Theological Education Network, or um, I-10 for, for short. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, what was needed, it was a developing organization uh, within World Outreach, and what they needed was someone to bring uh, a level of, uh, of uh, some organizational they were moving from an entrepreneurial phase into a phase of development and putting plans into action. And it just seemed like <clears throat> the right uh, right person, right time. And uh, yeah, long story as to how it all happened, but uh, uh, kind of happened unusually. But that's where the the Lord opened the door. So I said, okay, we'll walk through this. And uh, we we're based in the U.S. So we're based here in Phoenix, but we. Uh, have traveled extensively to uh, work with ten different uh, training sites around the world, Ooh. and uh, we've been not been to all of them, but a lot of them. And we but we focused here in the past uh, year on Southeast Asia. What an exciting time! Mm -hmm. Ten different yeah. training sites, so right. you really get to help equip right. people for ministry and right strengthen their faith. Yeah, our goal is the same as uh, as Engage 2025. We want to take the church where uh, it isn't, and the places we're working uh, have uh, very little access to good theological education resources. Mm -hmm. And the churches uh, need to be built up and strengthened, and their leadership strengthened, so that they can take their part in taking the gospel mm -hmm. to the unreached. So we're same goal, just through a different doorway. Mm -hmm. um,
So, uh, so you have to raise funds and, right. and all of that. And, and Ed didn't know that I was going to say this. This was not set up in advance, but I'm going to challenge you all who are listening to be generous either through our congregation, the Grace Community Church, um, through your support there. We, we support, as a church, mm -hmm. Ed and Nan's mission efforts. But I would challenge you to go over and above, friends, and uh, don't hesitate to um, write a check. And if you want to know where that check, how to write that check out, you just call the church office and we'll take care of it. So, Thank you. Um, but Thank you very much. Ed, um, I know that our time is quickly coming to an end, and probably we've gone over time, but you know what, it's, it's special to have you here. <laughs> um, uh, what do you, how would you challenge uh, people at Grace Community when it comes to thinking about faith and mission and where we are as a world right now? Mm. Um, yeah. But uh, we could certainly use your prayer and uh, wisdom as to how, how we move forward here because our, our uh, normal normal way of operating would be we do a lot of our work from, from the states and through email and through video calls and so on. So some of this is, is nothing new to us in your working remotely. But uh, that's uh, punctuated by, uh, by trips on site. And right now we, we can't do that and we don't know when the door for that kind of international travel is going to open up. We, Trust it will open up in October because we have some uh, classes, uh, some training classes planned in, uh, in Southeast Asia. Uh, mm -hmm. So if not, we're working now on uh, what's plan B. Can we do this if for some, if international travel is not possible? Uh, mm -hmm. Can we, is there another way to deliver this? Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. so on. But uh, just one way, one thing to keep in mind is, um, you know, there, there really is a theological famine in, in the world, not just a, a hunger famine of food, but a family of, of uh, famine for the word of God. Uh, I was really struck by uh, 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 reading a, some research that said, uh, th think of the, the number of, uh, of theologically trained people per person. Okay, in the United States, mm -hmm. there are, there's one trained person. Now training doesn't have to be a degree. There are many, lots of ways to be trained. But there's one trained person for every 250 people in the US. Okay. If you put that in the global context, there is one trained Christian leader for every 450,000 people. That, you, that, friends, is almost a half million people. And, so that's, this is what, what motivates us. You know, we, we have so many resources here. We are so rich in that regard. How can we best share those resources where there is need? Uh, another uh, set of, um, uh, it depends on which group you look at, but anywhere between uh, 80 and 90% of churches globally are led by people with minimal training. So you know, 80 to 90 percent. So important what you're led doing. Led by people that are not trained. Yeah. So how do we how do we share our resources with them to enable them to take their part in the Great Commission of getting the gospel to all the world? Friends, we have a big challenge in front of us, and uh, we're just very grateful for Ed and Nan McCallum. And um, uh, I'm going to pray a quick prayer with Ed, and then we're going to bring Nan on board. So you get to meet her. But Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the good work that you are doing through Ed and Nan McCallum. We're grateful for the multiplication of their efforts. And we're going to ask, O oh Lord, that you would multiply them all the more in ways that they don't even know right now. Um, God, we just uh, we, we, we know that there are people who desperately need to know about you, uh, about your goodness, your grace. Uh, a better way uh, of, of thinking, uh, a better way of being, because when you change us, oh Lord, you make us uh, new, and it's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. So Lord, I pray for Ed and Nan, and that your blessing would be upon them, especially during this uncertain time, that you would be working out your good purposes in and through them for your glory and for your kingdom here on earth, for we pray this in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. Dear friends, thanks for Amen. tuning in. Until Amen. the next time, keep your <laughs> eyes fixed on Jesus. Amen.